Star Fox, the first ever 3D space canine on-rails shooter for the Super Nintendo, launched in 1993. With the help of Argonaut Games creating the Super FX chip, Nintendo was able to create a new series that surely began to blossom, release after release. But I'm not here to talk about the development of Star Fox or the series as a whole. No, I just want to talk about the first game of the series, and thanks to Nintendo Switch Online, I was able to experience the game that started it all. Good luck! Upon starting the game, you're given a few control options, but going through the selection, I began to realize that it just swaps the button locations for the brake and the blaster, as well as change whether your R-Wing flies upwards when you press up, or the inverse, where it flies upwards when you press down. The cool part about this menu, however, is that you can directly control the R-Wing in the top left corner to really get a feel on which control system you prefer, which I think is pretty handy. This is also one of the first Super Nintendo games that I've played that utilize every single button on the controller. But then again, I mostly have only played platformer and puzzle games on the Super Nintendo, so there really isn't much competition there. Anyway, after pressing start, you have the choice of either training or getting to the actual game. Selecting training, the game puts you in a very basic training course in which you must fly through the rings placed ahead of you. A great way for first timers to get used to flying through a 3D space. To be honest, I never really dealt with this mode besides checking it out for the key purpose of this video, but I think it's really helpful in getting used to flying around in a game-like setting. Good luck. On to the actual game, starting with the story, which is a pretty basic one at that. Mad evil scientist Andros decides to take over the entirety of the Lilat system, home to many planets, including Corneria, one of the most peaceful and populated planets, and home to most of the Star Fox team. The Cornarian army, led by General Pepper, contacts the Star Fox team, consisting of Fox, Falco, Peppy, and Slippy, asking them for assistance in taking down Andros and saving not just the Lilat system in Corneria, but also the entire galaxy from Andros's hands. And so our heroes began their mission in one of three paths, each starting in Corneria and ending on planet Venom, where Andros resides. Each path is categorized by difficulty levels 1 through 3. The player gets to decide which route towards Andros they want to take, with level 1 being the easiest and level 3 being the hardest, as well as featuring one extra stage, being 7 total compared to the other level stage counts being 6. Now, if you count the icons on the map, you can clearly see that there are only 5 icons for the stages in levels 1 and 2, while level 3 appears to only have 6. And that is because the final stage, Planet Venom, composes of actually two separate stages, one taking place in space orbiting the planet, and the other taking place on the planet itself, where you must find and defeat Andros. Each stage plays out in a very similar fashion, fly through the hallway-like area, avoid obstacles, enemies, bombs, and missiles, eventually strolling upon the boss of the stage, shooting the blinking weak points on the boss, then progress to the next stage. Rinse and repeat. However, there are many things that spruce up the gameplay and make it interesting. Like most games, you have an HP bar, in this case being your ship's shield. Lose all of your shield and your ship goes down. Luckily, the game does allow you to refuel your shield by providing supply rings that you fly through. One ring type, being blue and gray, recharges a good chunk of your shield, while the other, more yellow ring, which appears after destroying certain enemy ships, gives you a small shield boost. On top of the rings, there are more collectibles that upgrade your ship when you fly into them or shoot down specific enemy ships. I'll throw visualizations of the objects that you have to run into up on screen, just so you know what I'm talking about. But these objects allow you to upgrade your blasters to the twin blasters, a stronger gun that deals more damage, give you an extra shield on the ship for a brief period of time, or provide you with Nova Bombs. Nova Bombs are really powerful blasts that deal massive amounts of damage and help wipe the screen of enemies. They are very helpful with destroying boss ships at the end of a given stage. I personally prefer to save these for the final boss, Andros, since they are kind of hard to come by, especially on your first time flying through the stages. 
Speaking of which, there are two different types of stages. One type takes place on the surface of planets, where the camera is shown from the back of Fox's Arwing. The other type is space battles, which still have the same gameplay of going straight in a hallway-like fashion, but in space, the camera zooms into Fox's cockpit, giving you a first-person view and making you feel like you're the one flying the ship in space, like out of any sci-fi film, such as Star Wars. Personally, I prefer the space stages, as it's just easier to avoid the projectiles, since they don't seem to hit you unless they land right in the middle of the screen, compared to on the surface stages, where projectiles, walls, and enemies can deal damage if they barely touch the wing of the ship. Now back to the level select. Like I said previously, each path is divided up into difficulty, with three being the hardest, but that's not the only thing that changes. Each level takes you through a different set of stages and even new locales, and although they all begin on Corneria and end on Planet Venom, each level's respective Corneria and Venom stages are also completely different in layout. For example, levels 1 and 2 Corneria take place during the day, while level 3 takes place during what seems to either be sunrise or sunset. Even the boss fights are slightly different between levels, with some stages getting completely new bosses. I mean, I don't mean to spoil too much, but level 3-3, or Planet Fortuna, has you fighting against the local wildlife, with mushrooms growing all over the place, water monsters jumping out to attack, then ending off with an epic boss fight against a giant dragon, Monarch Dodora. And I must say, on my first playthrough, I was not expecting this level to be vastly different in its environment compared to the rest of the game. And that's pretty impressive given all the locales and enemies are made of the simplest of 3D shapes. Playing through all the levels, I was also pleased that level 3 even changes up the fight against Andros. Though I don't want to spoil what changes, even though it's a pretty minor change, I totally was not expecting it. Oh, and how could I forget to mention one of the coolest but at time lamest parts of this game. Saving your allies. What do I mean by this you may ask? Well, every now and then one random member of the Star Fox team will be chased by an enemy fighter and they'll scream for help in their own special way over the intercom system, and you'll have about 5 to 10 seconds to quickly save them by shooting the enemy on their tail. If you help them quick enough, they'll thank you and stand by your side for a bit, randomly shooting in a strained line. If you don't help them in time, their ship takes damage and their health bar depletes, and that health bar carries over onto the next stage. The key here is to help your comrades in their time of need and make sure they make it to the very end to help you fight Andros. Is what I would say if they actually participated in the final fight. Yeah, I don't know why this was really included into the game, since the rest of the team doesn't really help you in any significant manner, but I still think it's a nice touch and adds some character throughout the game, even though the messages from each of the members of the Star Fox team are the exact same each time they appear when they need your help. Now I believe that's all there is to really talk about the gameplay in the first Star Fox. Fly your ship through the Lilat system and take down Andros and his army. But this is the part of video where I must do the most heinous of crimes on the internet. Provide you all with my thoughts and opinions. Good luck! Let's get started by talking about the graphics. I know, I know, a very controversial opinion to have on such an old game, but I hate to break it to y'all, but I believe that the graphics here have aged like milk. Now, to be fair, I was only able to play this game through Nintendo Switch Online, as Star Fox was not a game my parents ever got for their Super Nintendo, and I felt too cheap to buy this game for 20 bucks, especially if I wasn't sure if I was going to like it. Now, when I usually play games on the Super Nintendo app, I usually play them using the Pixel Perfect Screen option, just to give me those crisp, nice-looking sprites in games like Super Mario World. However, for a game that is trying to display 3D objects on what was hardware that was barely capable of doing so, I thought it would be best to try out the game through the CRT filter. Yeah, yeah, I know this filter built into the Super Nintendo app isn't the best, and I know some emulators are better at reproducing the CRT scanline effects, and nothing beats playing on an actual CRT. 
but I don't have the money or the space to go out and get an original copy of the game and play on an actual CRT TV. And if you haven't noticed by now, most of the footage I have captured was using the CRT filter. I mean, let me show you the difference between the Pixel Perfect and the CRT filters. For a game like Star Fox, I think it is a way better experience to play the game through a crappy filter as the 3D shapes don't look as jagged. Playing on Pixel Perfect, I could barely stand playing the game for more than 5 minutes. Oh, and don't get me started on the controls. I really wanted to play how the game was intended to be played. So I used the official Super Nintendo Switch controller to play through the game, and I must say, controlling an aircraft with a D-pad is the equivalent of a bird knocking on your window every morning to wake you up. At first, it absolutely sucks, but eventually you begin to get used to it and even start to cherish the bird. Though at times you really wish the bird would just fly away. Besides those two minor gripes, I did come to thoroughly enjoy the game, even through the insane amount of projectiles towards the harder levels. I mean, come on, how am I supposed to avoid some of these things? Which is why I made heavy use of the rewind feature. Now, that may make me a criminal to most of you old geezers, but let me explain myself. I just really wanted to see all of the game and I didn't want to spend so much of my time trying to master the game. Plus, I think with the use of the rewind feature, I was able to learn the boss mechanics and attack patterns much faster as I didn't have to completely replay a level and get back to the boss fight. This feature is no different from y'all's use of the Konami code in games like Contra back in the day, so I just don't want to hear it. I also think without the rewind feature, I wouldn't have been able to appreciate the game as much as I did, but I must applaud all you 90s kids that did play this game back in the day and mastered it, cause man can this game be unforgiving at times. But I think that's what makes this game so great. The difficulty as well as some of the hidden ship upgrades throughout the levels makes this game so replayable. Hell, I had to replay this game just to get some of the footage for this video, and the entire time I could see that I had improved a bit, which allowed me to enjoy the game even more on my second playthrough. Good luck! If someone were to ask me which Star Fox game they should start with, I would tell them to start with the very first one. Not just because it's the first game in the series, but because the gameplay can be really fun and interesting once you get past the terrible D-pad controls and sour milk-like graphics. But with mechanics like the rewind feature, it's easier for youngsters like me to play these older games just to experience and appreciate their offerings without getting the headaches and frustrations of trying to get from point A to point B without the game just planting tons of obstacles just to make it hard. Playing through the first game in the series has made me fall in love with the series, and I can't wait to try out the rest of the Star Fox game. As of making this video, I've already started my playthrough of Star Fox 2, and fully intend to play Star Fox 64. Hell, I even went out of my way to buy other Star Fox games to play, and I'm so excited to start them at some point. So if you haven't yet tried to get into the series, I seriously recommend you try out Star Fox for yourselves in whichever way possible, whether it be by becoming a pirate and using emulators, using official emulators made by Nintendo, or going out and searching for original hardware, I urge you just to try out Star Fox. And if the first game just doesn't click with you, I hear that Star Fox 64 is a retelling of the first game's story, so I guess maybe start with that one instead. However you get into this series, I highly recommend that you check out Star Fox.